That's, that's the way to go. All right. So, tech. Okay, tech. Who's a tech? All right? All right? Like, I don't know, 30% of the room. Who's non-tech? All right, the rest, I guess. Well, okay. Everyone is, is tech nowadays, more or less. Who? Oh, how are you, sir? Welcome. Well, Joel. It's my great pleasure to have Joel. Joel has been, um, you know, a director here in Coffee Dish for over two years. He's also my director at, uh, at head, has head of experimentation, is an innovation director, and uh, heads a division called Innovation Direction and Valor. I've been here for six months. I still struggle saying the <laughs> direction, but that's that's what it is. Joel, uh, thank you for hosting us today. The the floor is yours. Thank you, Alain. So, guys, uh, very happy to have you here at uh, Coffee Beach. So, first of all, why are we having this call um, or this event here today? I'm used to saying call these days, but uh, this is not a call anymore. It's a physical event. That's good. So, why, why are we having this here? So, as a, a lot of you might know, Product is really a philosophy which helps companies transform the way they operate and the way they deliver value to customers. And here at Coffee Dish, we truly believe that shifting this organization into a truly product organization is key for the future that we want to project going forward. And that's why Andre is here, that's why Nunu is here, that's why Sara is here, that's why a bunch of other people are here to actually help this company transform into a product organization. And, and what does this mean effectively? So for us, uh, this is about putting the user in the center of everything that we do. It has to do with really understanding, empathizing with their needs, with their pains, with their gains. It's really having the ability to rapidly iterate on experiments, which will allow us to find ways of delivering value to them. And delivering value to users means what? It means actually making their lives easier. In Coffee Dish, it means uh, making them have more peace of mind when it comes to their finances, having a, a, a good process to make sure that they make responsible credit decisions, and actually delivering also to our commercial partners a series of experiences which will allow them to do their business in a better, faster and cheaper way. And so that's why we are really excited to host you guys. That's why we are really excited about this partnership with Productize. So I'm really thankful to Andre as well and his organization because I believe these external partnerships are key to actually transform the way that financial services operate globally, of course, but here in Portugal in particular. I think we've, we've been organizations that have been very closed inside for a long time, and it's actually time to really push, push the walls, push the boundaries, open up, talk to the outside, build uh, creative partnerships, and find the right people around the table whether they are from Coffee Dish, whether they work in a different company, whether they come from a technical background, a non-technical background, whether they know how to code or not, whether they are designers, historians, mathematicians, the really key thing is to bring all of this diversity together to help us better empathize with users and create more value with our products. So guys, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy. So, good morning, uh, good afternoon everyone, <laughs> glad to have you here. Uh, it's a pleasure to co-host this event, this event with Andre. With and uh, I'm here to, by the way, I, I haven't introduced, introduced myself, so my name is Joel, uh, and I work here at Coffee Dish as a product manager in the experimentation team, so I'm the guy that uh, is also creating value to, to our customers and um, finding ways uh, to deliver to ship that value. 
So I have here something special, so we are gonna have a, a ruffle. Uh, so in the end, uh, don't go away, okay? Because we have here uh, a special gift for you. Uh, I don't want to say what it's gonna be, but it's something here, okay? Uh, and I hope you'll really like it. Uh, and I have the pleasure and the honor uh, because I, I did the, the invitation and I'm very happy with that. And uh, I have the, the, the pleasure to introduce to the stage uh, Nun March, the product design lead at Coffee Dish Pie. We are going to talk, we, are, we aren't going to talk about Coffee Dish Pie. Uh, maybe we'll touch there, but it's not the purpose uh, of the talk. Uh, and I told you, and I'm going to talk with you, I told you that I, have, I wanted to have something, a script, right? And I have something here, so I have my pocket notes. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do is I will hand it to you and keep it for yourself, read it. Uh, and yeah, and keep it for yourself. Fine? Okay. So I have the pleasure to introduce Nunu here. Uh, and Nunu is going to talk about design. Uh, and design is what makes as um, design defines what we think. Designs, design is where uh, is there when we take decisions, and design is everywhere. Design is part of our life, uh, and the things that Jerome told about making uh, better products, it all relates on design. And a final note um, for you. And this is something that I have been learning a lot, and we have been talking a lot, um, which is, you can be the best at what you do, but you, if, you don't do it, if you don't do it with purpose, if you don't do it with passion, you are not passing this, that message out. And you are the proof that when you do something with love, when you are passionate about the work, about the people that you, you want to serve, uh, we can do amazing things. So, Nunu, the floor is yours. This is my creative totem. Okay. This is um, Maria. <laughs> so, thank you, and um, thank you for coming. And um, I think most of you know me. The ones that don't know me, I'm Nuno Marques, I'm a product design lead at Coffee Dish, and I'm the Coffee Dish team. So today I'm going to try to speak a little bit about how to foster the design culture in big organizations like this one, and also inside of a company that is embracing the, the culture of product. It's not a deep dive, I don't think we need deep dives here, I think we need something more fresh. So I, I think about starting by myself, because lots of me know me around the company, uh, but don't, they don't really know me. Okay. So I was a barefoot street kid in Lisbon. Uh, I had to steal some food to eat when I was a kid. I sleep in the streets. Because of that, I become a punk on the movement punk. Uh, also in Lisbon, I had this haircut, crazy haircut. And because of that, I had a band, and I was related to music for a long time. Uh, then something comes into my life and I decided to go on the, to the military. I made two missions, one in Afghanistan and one in Mozambique. Uh, I divorced, I don't say how many times. <laughs> uh, artist, because I did a lot of graffiti when I was a kid and uh, lots of comic books. Um, I'm a street photographer. I have um, some projects around um, uh, homeless people in London. Um, music again, sorry, music is my life. Cooking, eating, drawing, user needs, people, and see, see someone wants to, uh, today told me I should put the ocean, is more inspired, but the sea is also good. And design, okay. So this is me, a little bit. When it comes to my profession and what I did, the things I did, I had a studio, the art studio design was uh, uh, my first, uh, adventure to become a, a business guy, didn't work well. 
Uh, I worked for the Portuguese government, I worked for the National Health Service in England, I worked for Gov UK England also, Disney, Lucas Films. I did some work for the government of Mozambique, and I'm now in Coffee Dish, this great country we have. Uh, I have a degree in communication design, I have a master in company management, and my UX training was in the Institute of UX Institute of Manchester, and I'm also a certified trainer. Uh, I think it wraps up everything I am for now. Because we're not products, finished products, you know, we're always involved in the winners, winners, yeah? So today I'm going to try to speak a little bit about, remind what is product culture, I think it's important. What is product design, foster the product design in a, in a big company, like these ones. And the outcomes for business, clients and employees. This is all a little bit mixed, this is not in points, in bullet points, that's not our work. Um, but um, I think it's going to be enough for us to have an understanding of this thing of design. So, product culture, what it is. This is boring. <laughs> now, product culture, understanding product culture, in the same, uh, three or two points. It's similar to company culture, uh, but it's a major emphasis on the product. The PMs define the product culture and not the executives. The PMs are the popes of the product culture. Then we have a product culture that takes into account the market understanding and the customer needs and customer personas. This is really important. The studies, the, 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 all the research is made into the market. Uh, it's important to create a product culture. It is a shared mindset across different teams in a company to agree on what and how um, they want to develop the product. This is basically in resume what is product culture. Then, product culture has three main axes. We're talking about customer understanding, UX, or user experience, the value proposition, when it's in tech, and the business model, model and position. Business we, as product team, are in the middle and have to take care of all these things. If you want to, um, at some point, ask questions in the middle, you can, okay? <laughs> so, in product design, what is product design? What is product design? So, product design is amazing. <laughs> yeah? I think product design is what makes things beautiful. Actually, design is the best thing ever. You are sitting on something that a designer builds, a product designer builds, and it's amazing. So that's what I have to say about product design, okay? No, it's not true. <laughs> so understanding product design uh, is the process of imagining, creating, interacting products that solve user problems, simple. So simple. Uh, product design works across multiple disciplines. We have a lot of disciplines. I'm not going to say all of them, but we have some disciplines to design the next generation of product. And this is important, the next generation, because this is what we built. Even if you have like a product that needs to be improved, yes. But the next one is going to be a new generation of that product. That's why we work with MVPs. This is all new products. Every time you bring MVP, this is a new product. Um, and then product designers are responsible for ensuring that the product meets the needs of the user. Simple. We work and we are focused on the user needs. That's the most important thing. If we know the user needs, if we know what he needs, we give him what he wants and what he needs to finish his tasks. Any simple task. If we look at uh, a simple way of using this thing here, for example. This is bad, this is so bad. But if you analyze this well, a user experience guy will make it work. Understand that? That's what we mean. We make things simpler, I think. Um, all the designer things, that's important. Lots of people ask me if the creativity comes out of nowhere. If, uh, but that's not true. We have systems, we have processes. Uh, and we have a process of solving problems. Our main process is the design thinking. Designers think as designers. <laughs> Simple. We always empathize and define, we always understand the problem, understand the user. We always ideate and prototype, we always come up with a solution that we think is the best. We prototype, this time we are exploring, and then we materialize. We mean we're going to test. If it doesn't work, we go back. And this is the loop until we have the product that the user needs. But, doesn't close there. 
We need always, always to interact with the user to understand, because users change from one day to the other. For example, the pandemic changed the users, changed the type of users. More old people start using phones to make shopping, for example. There are different types of users. Uh, you have now apps that are used for some kids, some millennials, <laughs> some young guys use the apps, and you have the old guys using the same app. So how are you going to do a usability that is going to be for someone that writes like this, or someone that needs to do like this? <laughs> how do we do it in one? Because we, we cannot design for 99 plus one. We need to design for an hundred. An hundred percent of the people. Even if it's old or doesn't see well, but our design needs to fit the purpose of all of them. Or it's not going to be inclusive, and inclusive is important, even in design. So now we know how we think, and this is the way we work to, the, to resolve the problem. And even uh, in day-to-day, -day when we are receiving the brief, for example, we apply this right away. When someone is telling us, oh, I have to change this in this form, or I have to change the way you upload the documents. When people are telling us that, we are already applying this in our brain to come up with some solution. So we are already creating. So I'll tell you now the main disciplines of product design, the ones we use the main use. One is user experience, and the other one is UI. I'm going to start by user experience, understanding what it is user experience. Uh, at this point, Let's imagine this. The lights came out. Okay? We're going to try now. He's going to try to put the lights out. More you can. Okay. It's not doing it. Not good design. See? Okay, but that's not the problem. So imagine this is we are almost no light in here. It's dark. You can imagine we are creative, yes? So grab your phones and put your light on, your flashlight. Turn to me, please. It was fast, wasn't it? The phone responds to you. You know how to grab the phone, grab the flashlight, and if it's completely dark, you will grab the flashlight, you will see why the user experience was well taught. You know how to use it. You didn't need to be teached. At this stage, you all know how to grab the flashlight even if it's totally dark, true? So that's user experience. And by observing what you're doing or observing what you, what you don't have, then we make the interface or, or the service the best for the occasion or even for moments that you're not expecting right now, we're not expecting. So, I can tell you this process uh, used to create products that provide meaningful and relevant experience. That's what we just saw. This was relevant. You needed the flashlight to see. UX design involves the design of the entire process of acquiring, integrating the product, includes executable branding, uh, usability, and function. This is really important. We cannot work without branding. That is something that lots of designers put aside and say, oh, branding, only again. They, are, they create pro problems. Oh, no. If you have a good relationship with branding in the beginning, they will teach us exactly what you can put in the app when it comes to visual, when it comes to cross-selling, when it comes to backgrounds, whatever components you put there, they have to be connected to the brand. Okay, lots of designers put that aside. They think it's secondary, but it's not secondary. Um, and now I'll talk a little bit about UI. Uh, the process designers use to build their fit. Oh, Windows has detected that the audience is not enjoying the presentation. <laughs> We're going to restart the audience. So let's think about it. What I choose is yes, no, maybe later, okay, not sure it's my fault. <laughs> yes, do it, they are boring. <laughs> Close and remind me later that you are boring and cancel. So, so imagine this is really the interface that we, are, we come up with. Which one I will press here? <laughs> uh, see that uh, the main one, the one you want, is here. We're going to cancel this, because she is going to restart the audience when you will go out and come back in person. <laughs> <laughs> but then this is the one you want. But this is one in the end. So the user is looking at this. In here, then focus all of these, lots of information. At some point, we'll say, okay, never mind. 
do it. Yes? Because I didn't find the pencil. Okay? So this is user interface. This is design of user interface. Bad design, of course. Uh, but that's what the user interface do. So before we saw the UX, yes? And the UX could tell him, look, at some point, we'll have a pop-up saying that the audience is boring. Uh, and you have to have a way for them to cancel or move forward or close the, the window. With this information, the UI designer is going to design, but he can do it wrong also. He can do it wrong also. In this case, because he didn't follow the rules and the guidelines of the UX, <laughs> mainly, mainly it was this. Okay. Foster the design in your organization. I think this depends on the organization, yes. Uh, some organizations are more traditional and conservative. They have uh, habits, processes that are almost closed. Yes, yeah, so we always do things like this. Why do we need to change? People don't like changes. Anyone don't like changes. First of all, you team up with your PM. That's the most important. Because all the work of having a department like Jerome has, all those things are being created already. Your part here as a designer is to help now. You are a player in this game. So the first thing you do is, P is team up with the PM. The PM is the Pope of the product culture, okay? I love my PMs, all of them. They love me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> team up with him, with him or her will give credit to the design works because it's him that presses the word to the team. This is important. It's not me that the team is looking for. It's to Rita, Karinas, all the product owners, we, all the product managers we have. The team is going to listen to them when they say, you have to do extra work, or you have to change this button, or this feature. To me, they will look like, hmm? they almost want to kill me because I want to change things, <laughs> you know? But if the PM says, no, you need to change, okay. Okay, Bob's. Okay, that's what they do. <laughs> Which is good, okay? But remember, remember, if you team up with a PM, in case of fire, don't be bent on the lift. <laughs> That's important, okay? No, no, no. <coughs> or you cannot go. <laughs> then you have to create moments where teams can participate in the design process. When I say teams, all the teams. I don't say only product teams. I say recovery teams. I say. Uh, client face teams, all those teams need to participate in more of the design process. For that, you create workshops, you create design thinking sessions, you create design sprints, just to name a few. You create moments where those people that are outside the, 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 the product teams have the chance to also help the company, help the user, okay? And also participate in this process of Culture. What is a culture? It to spread the culture. So we have some that never heard about it. What they do is answer the phone all day. Yeah. So this is for the end up. I come to work at nine, I go out at six, six time. Why? I should. So if you bring them, if you push them to us, uh, um, into these moments, they will feel the energy of the design. They will see the design improving their lives, the lives of the, the users. Results, that's another key thing. Always have a constant flow of moments with users. Could be user testing, user interviews, maybe tests, to name some just. Report the results, always report the results. Share the positive and the negative outcomes, that's really important. Let the team know what can be done to improve the experience. And the outcome for the product and the business. So, by doing this constant flow, the teams are aware that what you're doing as a designer and what you do and what the product design is doing is improving constantly. Could be the life of the user, could be the life of the, 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 the employee that uses a software, could be the life of the person that uh, um, receives the clients downstairs in the store. Yes? All of them could be improved as long as we are in contact, direct contact, and direct f uh, a constant flow of information coming from the user. That's important. I try to do that. I'm sure all the designers try to do that, but we are not, uh, I say, we don't have the, the power 
to have the things we want, because if we had the power, it would be, it would be too much. <laughs> we were too much creative. And then we have Mrs. Amorinda, yeah? This is Amorinda, she works as, as customer assistant. So, if we bring Amorinda from outside, she's from outside the public team, and we bring her to us, let her participate in user testing design sprints, for example. She comes to user testing, she participates in design sprint, and she goes out and says, hey, I'm helping. <laughs> helping is happening. And open the door for them to come and give you feedback. And that's the thing that it's more difficult sometimes in companies. Accept the feedback. You have a manager from a team of customer assistant, and that I mean if she goes to the manager giving the feedback, probably she will not hear what she wants. So by doing this and open the door, creating systems, processes, channels for her to come and give us feedback, we make sure she feels that is part of the game, and we have the chance to improve and to spread our culture to other places we're not there yet. Okay? Show them that with their help, we can improve our, our life, and that's the, 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 the tricky question. <laughs> that's a tricky here, because if it's inside a product team or a product team that you want to become a product team, those are aligned with us a little bit. But if it's someone from outside, oh, come in, come in. How are you? Well, it was sparkling. Okay. Coffee, uh, um, I was so then with their help, you can improve her life, customer life, and the business. And this is this is the thing. This woman thinks that her work cannot improve the company. Actually, she only does what they told her to do. She answers phones, be nice when she doesn't want to be nice, and that's what she does. For her, that's it. But it's at some point, she understands that she can have an opinion, and we can do his opinion to improve her life. But her life is the job, the family. So if she has a good life in her job, come on, she's perfect. She has what she wants, yes? Meanwhile, she feels she can help. In this case, imagine CDs to have <laughs> happier customers, returning customers, because she participated in a lot of those events, and now she has this feeling she can really be a, a, a part of this of this uh, uh, revolution. Yeah? Basically, the path can be slow, of course, because, like I said, uh, we have companies that uh, that have a way of thinking of. For years, it's like a tradition to be difficult. It's a tradition to have uh, systems that uh, take too much time, cost too much money. It's like a tradition, let's keep this. We always work like this. So it's a path that can be slow and sometimes even aggressive. You need to have, I think, a mentality to, 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 to receive some punches, to hear things that you don't want, if you are in the path of, of, of helping a company to become a company of product culture. Um, and like I said there, big organizations have old habits. So, once they start to see the results, the teams and the organization will end up loving the product culture and the design involved. Mm -hmm. I think this is simple when it gets there. Once it gets there, we have the feeling that, <laughs> because I experienced this before, we have the feeling that at some point we are all a big product team. Yes, and that's the path we're going to take on Coffee Beach. At some point, we are all, all of us, all of us, a product team with all the disciplines we have. Um, and that's where we want to go, to make this, all the things I said, lots of emotion, know the people we work for, we work with, know them, not in the false way, like, ah, you are with no, 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 you need to know them, know this one, know this one. <laughs> Treat them special because they are all designers in the organization. They are helping us do something good and make this organization or the organization where you are uh, a better place to work, basically, because that's what design do. It makes things more beautiful. Good product, happy users, happy clients, healthy business. That's simple, no more complicated than this. 
and I leave you now with um, a good example. Citibank had a, a problem with five millions because it didn't hire a designer. This is real. This was in 2021. What happened is they built the interface to transfer funds. Yes. But they didn't call any UX designer, any UI designer, any product designer, nothing. They just build the software. They don't give training to the people they were going to use. And at some point in the first week, a guy makes a mistake and transfers 500 million of funds to the accounts of the owners. They put the guys into the court, they try to get it. No, impossible. Legally, it was right. They made the transfer. And this is a good example of how much it can cost for organization, one of these, for example, huh, to lose if they didn't bet on product design and product culture, of course, because we are part of it. And uh, thank you. And you have to ask. <laughs>